I'm Sarah. And I'm Charlotte. And, and we're, we're the Swift, Swift Saga. For this episode, we will be talking about Taylor Swift's eighth album, Folklore. This album was actually a surprise album. Taylor announced she would be dropping a new album at midnight on July 23rd, 2020. I wasn't a big Swifty yet at this time, but I still was so shocked that she did this. I wasn't a big Swifty at all when this album came out, but it's still shocking that they got a surprise album. Now let's start reviewing the album. The very first track on this album is actually called The One, and I think that's very like funny and ironic for it being the first track. Um, I really love this song. The background music is so good. It's such like a different style, obviously. It's not her normal pop music. And even the very first lyric, she goes, I'm doing good. I'm on some new crap. And I was like shocked when I actually heard Taylor swear for the first time. Uh, So this song is just like such a great song to be the first track. The background music for this song is really good. And it's really relatable for like thinking back on what things could have been. This style of this song is a lot different than the rest of her music, but it's really good, and it's just overall a really good song. Track two is Cardigan, and this is probably my favorite song from the album. I just love this song so much. It's always been my favorite. Um, My favorite lyric from this song was the You Drew Stars Around My Scars lyric. Um, I just think that's really cute. The bridge in this song is so good, and the piano in the background is just really amazing. I also really, really love this song, and I love the lyric, um, you drew stars around my scars, but now I'm bleeding. And this bridge is, like, probably the longest bridge that she's ever written, like, at the time. And it's, like, almost a minute and a half long, which is, like, a very long bridge. Um, But she put so many metaphors in that, and, like, she really shows off how good of a writer that she is. And this song is, like, one of the best songs she's ever written. Track three is called The Last Great American Dynasty, and I also really love this song. It's kind of like a made-up story about Taylor's Rhode Island house that she calls Holiday House, and you don't actually know that she's talking about her house until the bridge when she, like, says, and then it was bought by me. And I just really love the storyline of this song, and I think my favorite lyric is, I had a marvelous time ruining everything, because that's kind of iconic for Taylor. I love the story that this song tells and then how in the bridge it reveals that it's not a story. It's like actually real, you know, and I love the background music to this song. She just wrote this song so well. I think my favorite lyric is I had a marvelous time ruining everything. That's just so iconic and so Taylor. Like, I just love that so much. Track four is Exile featuring Bon Iver. And I really like this song. I actually didn't like this song at first because I didn't like Bonnie Bear's voice, to be honest. I didn't like the way he was singing. But then once him and Taylor, like, come together and sing together, it makes a lot more sense why she had him on the song. I thought that she probably could have made a better choice. But then once I heard them together, it, like, kind of made sense. This song is just really good. The way that their voices, like blend together and stuff and the way that they um organized their parts i just really love this song i also didn't love bonnie bear's voice at the beginning of the song i kind of had a jump scare just because his voice is so deep but when her, him and taylor like start singing together they sound so good and this song is like sad but the lyrics are of course amazing because they're written by taylor and i think my favorite lyric is i think i've seen this film before and i didn't like the ending um that's definitely a good lyric Track five is called My Tears Ricochet, and this song is so sad, I did in fact cry when I listened to it for the first time, Um, but Taylor sounds so good on this one, like, I love her voice in this song, so even though it's sad, I tend not to skip it just because I like hearing her voice. Um, I also, the lyrics are so sad, the, I think my favorite lyric slash, like, the saddest lyric is, I can go anywhere I want, just not home which is kind of relatable but anyways i i love the song and the lyrics like change after the bridge and i think that's really cool i think this was a really good track five since all of her track fives are the sad songs of the album this one was a really good one this is probably one of my favorite track fives um i love the bridge it was it was really good the background vocals through the song are so amazing she really just composed this song so well 
Track six is Mirrorball, and I don't really know how I feel about this song. Like, I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. The background of the song is, like, kind of sad, but it's just, like, not the best one on the album. I feel like it, it could have been taken further, you know? I agree. Mirrorball isn't really my favorite song on the album, just because there's so many better songs. Um, and the lyrics are, like, sad and... Like, the background music sounds cool, but it's also kind of sad. I do like the bridge. My favorite lyric is, I've never been a natural. All I do is try, try, try. Um, Very sad lyrics, but overall a pretty okay song. I love that track seven is literally called seven. I think that's funny. Um, I do actually really like this song. My favorite lyric is, love you to the moon and to Saturn. And I actually have a crew neck that has those lyrics on it. Um, Taylor's voice, of course, sounds so good. And there's a lot of theories behind the meaning of this song about, like, a gay relationship or like about Taylor's childhood and like one of her friends didn't have a very good home life or something but I don't I don't really go into theories that much I just more enjoy the music but a lot of people speculate about what this song is actually about I really love this song overall um the way that she sings in the beginning of the song is just so nice and I just love the whole song in general honestly all of it is really good but especially the beginning was my favorite part Track 8 is August, and this is the second Love Triangle song. The first song is Cardigan. Um, I really love the bridge of this song. Her background vocals and, like, the lyrics and stuff are so good. This song overall is just one of the really good ones off this album. I think this is, like, my second favorite. August is definitely my favorite song on the album. I just, I love the whole Love Triangle songs. Those three songs are my favorite, but August is my favorite on the album. I wrote the lyric, um, wanting was enough for me. It was enough. I really like that lyric. Um, the storyline, like, of the Love Triangle is just so cool, and I love it. And Taylor, of course, the lyrics are amazing. The vocals are amazing. Everything about this song is honestly a 10 out of 10. Track 9 is called This Is Me Trying, and again, another very sad song, Um, but of course, it sounds really cool because Taylor's an amazing singer. Um, One of the lyrics that I think is, like, good but also kind of scary is could have followed, like, what'd she say? She goes, pulled the car off the road to the lookout, could have followed my fears all the way down. It's very dark, um, but she sounds good when she's singing it, Um, and the bridge, of course, is amazing. Taylor's known for writing really good bridges, and this song is one of them. I feel like with every one of her songs, I mentioned that I loved the bridge, but I'm doing it again because (laughs) the bridge for this song is really good. I just feel like I need to give recognition to every single one because they're all so good. Um, This song is really sad, but it's also just a really good song. This is a lovely song to listen to while crying. Um, (laughs) I, I really like this one. I don't normally like sadder songs, but this one is really good. Track 10 is Illicit Affairs, and this is one of the few Taylor songs that I really didn't like that much. Um, There's only a couple of them that I really don't like, Um, but I don't know. It just wasn't my favorite. I like all of Taylor's songs are good, but there's just some that are better than others, and this one isn't one of them, in my opinion. When I first listened to this song, I didn't like it that much just because it is like sad and um, it's not my favorite like she sounds good but like the background music isn't kind of my favorite but I went to a Broadway sings Taylor Swift thing in New York City this summer and three people sang this song like acapella and they sounded so beautiful that now I just love this song because it makes me think of that performance so it's still not my favorite song but it's it's pretty good Track 11 is called Invisible String, and I absolutely love this song so much. The background music is cute. The lyrics are cute. Like, everything about this is just such a cute love song. And it kind of went viral on TikTok, and a lot of people play it, like, with their violin or piano or something, and it sounds really beautiful. And just the fact that, I don't know, it's just like a love song, and I love Taylor and her current boyfriend, Joe. Like, I love the relationship, and I love the songs that she writes about him, and this is one of them. I liked this song a lot. I really like the background music to this song, and the lyrics on this song are really good. I love romance. Like, anything romance, I eat it up. So, I really loved this song. And I just think it's really cute that it's about an actual person that she's currently with still. When she wrote this, like, a while ago, and they're still together. I just love that for her. 
Track 12 is Mad Woman, and I really love the background for this song. The piano is just so nice. I just love this song overall. Like, it's giving baddie vibes like most of Taylor's songs are, but this one especially is just, like, different, you know? And I just love that. I also really love this song because of the baddie vibes that Taylor's giving off. I also like the piano background. I love piano so much, so... Obviously, I love this song because the background is pretty much all piano. And I really like the lyric, they say move on, but you know I won't. And that's very Taylor-like because she will forgive, but she will not forget. And the bridge is also really good because, of course, it is. Track 13 is called Epiphany, and I think this is one of the saddest songs Taylor's ever written besides, like, some of her breakup songs. But this song, she kind of relates, like, World War II because her grandpa fought in World War II to, like, COVID and, like, the nurses and doctors that had to deal with all that. And I cried to the song the first time that I heard it because it's just so sad, but it's written so beautifully and like the background vocals and the background music is, it's just so beautiful and Taylor sounds so good on it, but I also never listened to it because it is so, so sad. And I think that just shows how good of a songwriter Taylor is. She can write super happy pop songs and she can write very heart wrenching songs that make people bawl their eyes out. This is a really good song. It is really sad, but I love that taylor gave recognition to something like this and i like how she related something personal to her with her grandpa in world war ii to something that everyone had gone through i just really like the recognition that she gave to the struggles track 14 is betty and this is the last song of the love triangle songs Um, The other two were August and Cardigan. Um, I really like this song. The bridge relates to Cardigan and August, which I thought was really cool. And the harmonica in this song is really good. I really love this song, and I love how, like, August, Cardigan, and Betty and all the lyrics, like, relate to each other. I think my favorite lyric on this song is, I'm only 17, I don't know anything, just because I am, in fact, 17, and I don't know anything um and the her voice sounds perfect on it of course and i just really love the love triangle and i'm really glad that she made up a story and was able to share it with the world track 15 is called peace and this isn't one of my favorite songs just because it is more like low tempo and kind of slow and it has a really long intro but it does sound cool the back the background music is cool and it's like a cute little love song And I think my favorite lyric is, the rain is always going to come if you're standing with me, just because that's very, like, true for Taylor, and I guess, I don't know if it's relatable, but I just love her songwriting on this song. This song is a slower one, and since it's slower, I'm not into it as much, because I like more upbeat music, but it's about romance, so I do still like it a lot. One of my favorite lyrics is, all these people think love is for show, but I would die for you in secret. I just love um, Taylor's romantic songs in general, but this one is probably one of my favorites. 16 is Hoax, and I really love this song. I really like the piano in this one, and the lyrics to the song are really sad, but it's just a really good song. Like, they're so, I don't know, they're like so gut-wrenching, but so like slay at the same time (laughs) yeah the lyrics for this song are kind of sad but they're it's also kind of a love song and i also love the piano um i like the lyric you know i left a part of me back in new york um i just i like that lyric taylor always talks about new york in her songs the bridge of course is really good and it's kind of like a slow song like these last few songs on the album are like slower but they're really good and they kind of are like in the folk genre. So like it makes sense that they're kind of slower and not fast paced. There's only one bonus track on this album and it's track 17. It's called The Lakes. This is, an- this is again another like slow love song. But Taylor, this one, she again shows off her vocals. She sounds so good on this one. And I really like the lyric, a red rose grew up out of ice frozen ground. I think that's kind of representative of like Taylor and like the love that she has with her boyfriend. Um, I just, I really like this song. It's a good last song for the album. I really like this song, even though it is a slower one. It's still really good. Her voice sounds incredible on this song, especially the bridge. I think that's probably my favorite part. And she just, she ate, honestly. She ate the last track. My favorite song from this album is Cardigan. I'm not really sure why. I just love this song so much. It's just my favorite. 
I think my favorite song in the album is August. I really love the like made up love triangle that we talked about between Cardin Cardigan, August and Betty, but August is just relatable for me and I really love that song. Now let's ask Amanda a few questions about the album. What are your overall thoughts on the album? Um, so overall, I think the album is like really beautiful. Um, I mean, like every song has like its own story and it's kind of like you feel like you're in a fairy tale almost because it's like, like, I don't like some of it, like Betty, Betty. Oh my God. It feels like you're in a story with her. And like, I feel like every song on the album has like, it feels like a different story. In, like some of them are based like on true stories but they all feel like a fairy tale and I think just because they're like so different from her past albums like because she's never done like folk before and I don't think anybody was expecting it <laughs> and it like turned out so well and I think folklore is like overall one of my favorite albums just because it's so different what was your favorite song the first time you listened to the album and what is your favorite song now? So I think when I first listened to the album, well, I really liked all of the songs. The whole album is good, but um, I gotta say August. I think August was probably the first song I really liked and like really knew too. But now... Um, I think the songs that I just absolutely go crazy for <laughs> are um, Exile, Betty, and The Lakes. I just, every time I hear them, I belt. I can't help myself. <laughs> what song do you relate to the most? Um, so, I think the song I connect to the most is The Lakes. Um, I think... The way I interpret it is, like, feeling like you don't belong. Well, I mean, she literally says, I don't belong. <laughs> but, um, like, feeling like you have no one around you, really. And then, like, wanting to go away to somewhere beautiful where just, like, everything just, like, is amazing. And, like, where you can just start something new. And, like, I think... Because, like, I always want to go to, like, somewhere with, like, amazing views where I can just get away from all my, just everyone. <laughs> so I think that's the song I relate to the most. <laughs> what is your least favorite song? Okay. Um, I think my least favorite song is Epiphany. Um, not that it's a bad song. It's, it has really amazing lyrics, but it's just, like, like I love to sing along to songs and I think it is the least sing alongable song on the album. <laughs> like it um it just like doesn't have like a well, how do I explain this? It doesn't have like like it just says the same lyrics over and over and it's like kinda muffled and it's almost like she's talking, not really singing for most of it. There's like some parts of it where it's like you could sing along, but like yeah, and it's really sad. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were you a Swifty when this album came out? And what was your reaction to the surprise drop of the album? Okay, so why do I keep saying okay before everything I say? Um, I wasn't really a Swifty when she released Folklore um, or Evermore. I, like, okay, I knew who she was, obviously. And when I was younger, I listened to her all the time. So I loved her, but I had like kind of phased out of her music. And then when she announced she was re-releasing Fearless, I was like, oh my god. And then now I'm obsessed. <laughs> and But like when I first listened to Folklore and Evermore, I was like still surprised because like I was still not expecting her to go into folk. Like... Because she was always so poppy and, like, even her country music was, like, it had, like, a poppy feel to it. And so, like, for her to go from that to folk and, like, especially the type of folk that she did was still, like, a complete surprise. So, yeah. Thanks for being here, Amanda. Okay, I'm recording. Thanks for being here, Amanda. Thanks for having me. It was fun. 
Now we're going to play a game where we spin a wheel to get an album, and then we'll spin a wheel again to get a song from that album, and then we'll review it. Now let's spin the wheel. We got speak now. Now let's spin the wheel to get a song. We got long live. Long Live is the last track of Speak Now besides the deluxe songs, and I love this song because Taylor actually wrote it like for her fans because she thought after her Speak Now tour she was going to have to like stop making music and stop going on tour because there were a lot of bad reviews that came out about her, but obviously as we know because we just talked about her seventh album, she did not quit, but I just love this song because I love being a fan of Taylor. I didn't recognize this song at first when we listened to it, but I used to love this song when I was little. It was my absolute favorite. I used to stand Taylor when she was like a country star when I was little. Um, this is just a classic Taylor song. I don't think there's anyone that can't like this song. Today we got to talk about Folklore, the album that won Album of the Year at the 2020 Grammys. We also got to talk to Amanda to have another Swifties thoughts on this surprise album. Thanks for tuning in. See you in our next episode.